How to make Antarctica great again? Build a wall. Scientists have proposed a crazy plan to build a wall around the Antarctic ice sheets in a bid to slow their collapse. As the planet heats up due to global warming, the world's ice sheets are rapidly melting and causing sea levels to rise at an alarming rate. To prevent this global catastrophe, scientists propose constructing artificial undersea mounds to catch the ice as it flows forward, thereby allowing it to reground. A second idea aims to address the threat of warm water currents, which have been known to thin ice shelves. According to the research, building a long continuous wall or sill across the front of the glacier will block warm water from seeping under the ice shelf. The study's authors found that smaller structures would have a 30% success rate and that larger walls may even be more effective. However, some scientists warned that such geoengineering is simply a band-aid for the real problem and offers no real solution to reversing global warming. We need to stop messing up the planet. Chocolate is about to say goodbye to the world. If you're a fan of chocolate, you better start hoarding it now because it may be joining the dinosaurs in just a few decades. Scientists say chocolate is in danger of disappearing by 2050 due to warmer and drier conditions from global warming. Cacao can only be grown within a narrow strip of rainforested land about 20 degrees north and south of the equator, where the temperature, rain and humidity are relatively constant year-round. Over half of the world's chocolate comes from two African countries, Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana. However, rising temperatures over the next decades will make those regions unsuitable for cacao. Researchers from the University of California are now working with the Mars Company to save the cacao plant from disappearing. Berkeley scientists hope to modify cacao DNA using CRISPR technology to develop plants that won't wilt or rot at the current elevations under warmer conditions. No, but really. Life without chocolate? Solar panels may not be all that good for the environment. America's growing reliance on solar power may have created a new enemy for environmentalists, a greenhouse gas that's thousands of times more potent than CO2. Greenhouse gas emissions in the US are 82% carbon dioxide. The gas nitrogen trifluoride, or NF3, accounts for only a small margin, but is on the rise. CO2 levels have risen only 5.6% from 1990 to 2015. The levels of NF3 have seen more than a 1,000% increase over those same 25 years. This exponential rise has been linked to the manufacturing sector, which uses the chemical to make solar panels, semiconductors, and LCDs. NF3 is mainly used as a cleaning agent to clear away excess silicon. Though mostly eliminated during use, a small percentage is leaked into the atmosphere. It's unclear exactly how much has been leaked, but scientists warn that NF3 is highly effective at trapping heat and can remain in the atmosphere for up to 740 years. Scientists warn that NF3, when combined with CO2 and other greenhouse gases, could lead to a climate problem, especially with NF3 emissions rising not only in the US, but in growing solar markets in Asia as well. With carbon dioxide proving difficult to limit, environmentalists could soon target NF3 in their quest to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Bummer, dude. Rising temperatures have caused a major downturn in male turtle populations in the northern Great Barrier Reef. New research has found that 99% of sea turtles in the Pacific Ocean's biggest green sea turtle rookery are female. Researchers suspect this is due to warming temperatures. A sea turtle's sex is temperature dependent. Males are born at around 27.7 degrees centigrade, while females are born at around 31 degrees centigrade. An area further south holds a ratio of two females to one male sea turtle. According to National Geographic, recent research looking at 75 rookeries from around the globe put the ratio at 3 to 1. If rising temperatures continue, male turtles may be wiped out. And nobody wants that. Soil released from carbon may heat planet even further. A 26-year-long soil study has unearthed something rather concerning. According to new research published in the journal Science, soil releases more carbon when heated to a certain point. 
In 1991, scientists placed heaters 10 centimeters under soil in the Harvard Forest in Massachusetts. They artificially heated that area over 26 years. Scientists observed the heated soil release 17 percent more of its carbon content compared to unheated soil. If warmer soil produces higher carbon emissions in forests around the globe, then the global warming process could speed out of control. Production of chemical hurting the ozone layer. Banned chemicals are being used somewhere in the world again, and the ozone is being damaged as a result. New research published in the journal Nature details findings that posit somewhere in East Asia is producing the banned ozone-depleting chemical CFC-11. According to the BBC, CFC-11 was used in the 1930s as a refrigerant. It could also be found in solvents and aerosols. But its use came at a devastating cost. Along with now other banned chemicals, its use left a massive hole in the ozone layer. Scientists say the continued production of the chemical may slow the recovery of the ozone. Researchers considered several factors to explain the continued presence of CFC-11, but concluded that unreported new production is behind it. Speaking to Time, University of Maryland expert Ross Salowich said this rogue production of CFC-11 could hurt the ozone recovery. And that's bad because it leaves the ozone, and thereby all 7 billion Earthlings, exposed to new threats. That's why CFC-11 and ozone-depleting chemicals like it were outlawed under an agreement named the Montreal Protocol. Climate change may be killing baobab trees. This magnificent plant is the baobab tree. Different species of these trees can be found across Africa, Australia, and the Middle East. They can live for thousands of years, grow up to 30 meters tall and even 20 meters in diameter. Sadly, though, new research has revealed that some of them are suddenly dying. Writing in a new study in the journal Nature Plants, researchers detail how they tracked some of these trees using radiocarbon dating since 2000. According to Popular Science, the researchers looked at 60 trees in total. Their findings report that nine of 13 oldest trees have begun to perish, as have five of six larger ones. The deaths just began occurring in the last 12 years, and scientists don't know particularly why. But they do have a guess, and it's the usual suspect, climate change. Speaking to the Los Angeles Times via email, lead author Adrian Partit explained the trees are used to drier and colder conditions, but possibly not to hotter conditions. Partit told the Times he and researchers suspect that the combination of temperature increase and extreme drought stress were responsible for these demises. <laughs>